So in this video, I want to talk about the initiation of an adaptive immune response upon a bacterial infection. So the adaptive immune cells are going to be activated in the lymph node. So the first question that we need to ask is, how does the cells in the lymph node know to do stuff? Because if you think about the example that we discussed in another video, having hit a nail in our big toe, then we know that the bacteria that we are going to fight off are in the big toe. So how is the lymph node going to be informed to initiate an adaptive immune response to fight this bacteria in the big toe? Well, the cell that's going to help to do so is the dendritic cell. We talked about the dendritic cell in a previous video, and we gave it the slogan, eat, show, and run, because it's one of this guard that just eats up everything that it can find, shows it via MHC class 2. Remember, cells don't have hands to show things, so they use MHC class 2, and then they are running off into the afferent lymph vessel. This is this one that way street that ends in the lymph node. And so the dendritic cell takes kind of a snapshot what is happening at the site of infection and then is off to the lymph node. And that's where we find it now. We find it in the lymph node. It has taken up stuff at the sites of infection and is now proudly presenting it via MHC class 2 and hoping to find a T cell that can get activated, which has a T cell receptor that recognizes a peptide that is presenting. So the lymph node hosts all these naive CD4 T cells that are very unique all and recognize only one specific antigen. And they all hang out in the lymph node to wait till a dendritic cell or another antigen presenting cell can activate them. So in a way, this lymph node is nothing else than a dating bar. It's kind of a very efficient way to get these cells together because the dendritic cell comes and is now going to go on the search for the partner that would recognize its peptide presented by MHC class 2. So it's nothing else than kind of a speed dating because the dendritic cell actually can host 1,000 T-cell visits per hour to make sure that it finds its partner. And so once this partner has been found and it found a T-cell that can recognize why it's T-cell receptor, the peptide that is presented on MHC class 2, it can get activated, this T-cell, in a process called clonal expansion and become an effector CD4 T-cell. And the effector CD4 T-cell is a cell that's going to help clear the infection. So let's look how such a T-cell can get activated. There are three signals necessary to undergo the process clonal expansion. So signal one is just recognition of the peptide via the T-cell receptor. Signal two is a protein-protein interaction between the T-cell and the antigen-presenting cell, normally B7 with CD28. And signal 3 is in the production of IL-2 and IL-2 receptor by the T-cell, which acts as a T-cell proliferation stimulator. So one single activated T-cell can give rise to about 10,000 daughter cells during the first week. So it's a very efficient way to produce a lot of cells that can help clear the infection. So we have now discussed the production of effector CD4 T cells, which are also known as the T helper cells. And these T helper cells, as the name already implies, the effector function is to help, to help other cells to do a better job. And number one cell that is going to be helped is the B cell. The B cell is also going to be found in the lymph node and it's going to help activate the B cell so that the B cell can make antibodies. And so the antibodies can help clear the infection. And another effect of the T helper cell is the T helper cells can go back via the efferent lymphatic, show up at the site of infection and help other cells to do a better job 
as for example the macrophage to phagocytose bed. Stop the story here and see how B cells are activated. So these naive B cells are also going to hang out in the lymph node and wait to be activated. But in contrast to the T cell, they want somebody to come to them and present stuff in a very specific way. The B cells are our humble cells. They take actually everything. They just need to recognize it via, the B, via their B cell receptor, which is nothing else than a membrane-bound antibody. So how do this pathogen fragment get there to activate the B cell? So remember, at the site of infection, in our case the big toe, there's inflammation going on. Macrophages are eating up bacteria. And macrophages are not kind of clean eaters. They tend to burp. There's always going to be a little bit release of pathogen fragments. And as there's an inflammatory process, there's going to be increased fluid movements in the tissue. So fluid is drained through the lymphatics and it's going to get through the afferent lymphatic into the lymph node. And that's where we find all this pathogen fragments that eventually can activate a B cell once the B cell receptor is going to recognize it. So what is very important for the activation of B cells is that the B cell receptors, they are all have the same specificity. They need to bind to multiple copies of an identical epitope because it's necessary that there is cross-linking of these B cell receptors to activate a B cell. So once this pathogen fragment is recognized by multiple B cell receptors, the B cell will endocytose this pathogen fragment and will present it via MHC class 2. And there will be a high frequency of different pathogen peptides presented on MHC molecules. So let's understand the complete process, how a B cell gets activated. So what we just discussed is a so-called signal one. A B cell recognizes a fragment, it's endocytosing it, and it's presenting it via MHC class 2. So for the signal two, the B cell needs help. The B cell gets help from a T helper cell. And this is the effector CD4 T cell that we just produced in high amounts. And so as the B cell has now endocytosed this particle and presents lots of different peptides on its MHC class 2 mo molecules, an effector CD4 T cell will eventually recognize it and will contribute to signal 2. Signal 2 is again a protein-protein interaction, the interaction of CD40 with CD40 ligand. And then signal 3 is again the production of cytokines by the T cell. So if those events have happened, these three signals, a B cell, a naive B cell, can get activated to become a plasma cell, which is the effector B cell. And as we all know, the effective function of a B cell is to produce antibody. So the plasma cell has the capacity to make antibodies. So now we have produced antibodies in the lymph node. And of course, these antibodies are going to get back to the site of infection via the efferent lymphatic coming through the thoracic duct into the blood. And we're going to find these antibodies in the blood. They're going to circulate in the blood till they come to the site of infection. Because this is the only place where there's inflammation, where there's increased capillary pressure, where there's gaps in between the endothelial cells. So this antibody can get directly to the site of infection and help clear the infection. This concludes the video on the activation of the adaptive immune response in the setting of a bacterial infection.